Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me, for inviting me to the festival. And I want to talk about the impact age. So welcome to the impact age. So if there's one thing you might remember afterwards from all the things I'm going to tell you is the times has changed and it's now all about impact. That's all you have to know. For the ones who might be interested in a little bit more details, I also have a few more details we can talk about. And so I will cover basically three things. So first of all, why? So why are we talking about impact? Why are we talking about purpose? Why do we care about a new age? Secondly, I will talk about the ecosystem. And for me, a great indicator that we are not talking about silos anymore when we talk about impact, but about really an ecosystem is this festival. So many people from different backgrounds are coming together to this impact festival. So we're talking about the ecosystem of impact. And thirdly, and that might be a little bit the boring part, we're also talking about how to do that. Because if we talk about impact, we also have to know how to measure it, how to manage it. But just to make that disclaimer right at the beginning, it's not about the methods, it's about the mindset. But nevertheless, it's sometimes also good to know how to do it. Okay, so these are the three parts we're going to talk about. So, even though I'm a very optimistic person, and I'm very energized being here with people, like-minded people like all of you, we have to start a little bit with the downer. So, there are so many challenges out there. Plastic change, CO2, we just heard about that, migration, terrorism, war, inequality. So I can continue this list for on and so on. And that's quite frustrating. And it's all so nicely summarized in the SDGs and the Sustainable Development Goals. So that's on the one side. On the other side, and that's good news, we can tackle those issues. We don't have to be frustrated. So there are instruments, there are resources, there are ideas out there with which we can tackle those challenges. And for me, three parts are most relevant. And I start with the values. So the mindset is important, the attitude we're having. And secondly, of course, yes, we also need ideas, but we do not have to have innovation all over the times. Sometimes also things which come from the past might also work. So don't just say that innovation is the ultimate goal. So, but we need innovation, we need ideas. And thirdly, of course, we also need resources, we need financing for that. And I will also cover that part. But, so these are the three ingredients we need when we would like to tackle, to solve the issues we are facing. And who is doing that? Who is having impact? And I'm saying everybody's aiming at impact. And this is maybe what really makes the new ecosystem, the new age we are facing. Everybody is looking for impact, and they might start with the individual level. I don't know, in my case at least, I'm surrounded by people, by individuals who are just talking about impact. Yes, it's a bubble, but I think still it's a good indicator of how the society is developing. So my daughters, I have three daughters, they are asking me when we're having dinner, what is changing in the world, how can we have a better world, and so on. So this is starting there. So we're talking about our colleagues, our customers, our clients, so the employees, all are asking what is the purpose and how can I achieve impact. So that's on the individual level. And then we see the different sectors. So we see, of course, civil society, the nonprofits. I mean, the core reason why a nonprofit organization is existing is they want to achieve impact. So this is definitely a sector which can claim for a good reason to be an impact driver. And it's huge. I mean, just to give you an idea, when we talk about the nonprofit sector, I know here at the festival we are mainly talking about the social business sector and financing, but when we talk about the nonprofit sector, we should be aware this is a huge sector. We are talking about roughly 600,000 nonprofits alone in Germany. They are all aiming at impact. Worldwide, it's more than 10 million. They are all aiming at impact. So that's huge. Then the public sector. The public sector should be there. Politicians should be there to achieve impact. Sometimes they are distracted by other ideas, but mainly this is a key function of the public sector to achieve impact, to make the world a better place. And we do see that they are picking up our topics. And we are facing the elections here in Germany, and regardless which colors we are going to have 
I'm pretty sure that our topics will have a boost afterwards. So they are working on the regulatory framework, but they are also spending money towards impact. And then there's a fourth part, and that's the private sector. The private sector, yes, is not an altruistic sector. So a company is not there to do good per se. But we see that also companies, startups, but also corporates, are realizing that they should have impact. And this is, I think, quite astonishing because they are not just gaining and looking at greedily getting money, but they also would like to contribute. And this is coming either from their customers and their employees, but also from, from the insight that by taking sustainability into the core of the strategy, they can even be more successful. So this is basically the entire ecosystem, so everybody is looking for impact. So what does it mean? It means not only it's good that we have all of them on the side of impact, we also need it. And here's just one number, which is sometimes a little bit frustrating. I refer back to the SDGs. So if we would like to tackle the SDGs, we need this money. And there is still a gap. There is a gap of 2.5 trillion US dollars annually. And it becomes quite obvious that just public sector and governmental spending and nonprofits and philanthropy, they cannot fill the gap. So we have to mobilize the capital markets to really work substantially towards impact. So this is why we need to work across all sectors to achieve impact. So that means we need all the different financing instruments. And this is, I'm pretty sure, a scheme you have seen before. So we have philanthropy on the one side, we have the traditional investment on the other side, and in between we have all the different categories how we can achieve impact with financial instruments. I don't want to walk you through all the different details, but important is that we have sustainable finance and impact investing in the center of it. Just as a definition, when we talk about responsible investment and sustainable finance, we mainly apply instruments like ESG, and that mainly means that we are trying to avoid harm, which is good, and honestly, that should be the base. There should not be anything else I mean, traditional investing where you harm the world should not be allowed anymore. At least it should be so expensive that it shouldn't be possible anymore. But responsible investment still is still a minority. In Germany, we have roughly 5% of all assets under management which are ESG compliant. This has to grow, but definitely impact investing, which is turning the investment theory into positive, has to grow. So impact investing means you invest with the intention, with the intention to achieve impact and to measure the impact. This is just a brief excursion because uh, I have now mentioned two different things, ESG and impact investing slash um, SDG investment. So these are interlinked. So you can see that you can basically map and combine the ESG criteria with the SDGs and you see that they are correlating in many cases, but you can also see that there are gaps. So there are some aspects which are not really equally covered by ESG criteria. And that it means, on the contrary, that we also should focus on impact investing from a helicopter perspective. So we need to zoom out and look, so what are the gaps, what are interventions we even need more money for and should focus on that. So this is just a quick excursion so that you know what is the combination between ESG and impact investing, which we do see in many different contexts. So, now digging into impact investing. Um, impact investing, the word is around maybe the, since 15 years, and it has for a long time been a quite small topic, a niche. Now it's coming out of the niche, it's becoming mainstream, and there are different drivers for that. Yes, so the challenges I have mentioned at the beginning, but we can also see that impact investing is expanding in two different dimensions. So first of all, regarding the asset classes. Impact investing, and this is an important point, is not an asset class. Impact investing is an investment strategy, which means that you can basically apply impact investing to all different asset classes. And this is now happening. So it started at the beginning with investments mainly in private equity and venture capital, which is so easy because you have a small uh, target, it's easy to capture the impact. But now it's going to all the different other investment classes. So for example, we have private equity, we have loans, we have real estate. 
I personally like also the idea of hedge funds. So I'm personally sitting on an advisory board of an impact investing hedge fund. So I see that we see also activism going into the field of impact investing. So this is regarding all the different asset classes. And complementary to that, we see that now other investor types are going into the field. So it started mainly with high net worth individuals and family offices doing investments into social businesses. And now it's moving to foundations. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed that foundations were not the first movers, but okay, they are, they are always claiming to be quick, but usually they are not. Um, so, but now it's going also in the field of institutional investors, which is important because we have to move the capital from the pension funds of the world. And of course, then we go into the retail market. We are not there yet, but there are also players out there, like for example, the Tomorrow Bank, really aiming at bringing impact investing also to the investors having smaller budgets. So this is how the impact investing ecosystem is growing along the different dimensions that is really becoming mainstream. A little bit more details about what does impact investing mean. So you are just adding a third dimension to risk and return. The third dimension is impact. Yes, of course, all investments, even if you just do investments with two dimensions, have impact. Um, but nevertheless, when you take impact investing seriously, that means that you very specifically focus on the third dimension and you are managing towards that. So this is what impact investing means. And even more simplistically, it means you have a situation, you have a problem, you plan an intervention, then you have an interaction, and then you are hopefully having impact, a positive impact. That's simple. The more complex thing is, to measure impact is not that easy, not as easy as the two other dimensions. To measure the return is quite easy, to measure risk is also relatively easy, but if we really take it seriously with the three dimensions of impact investing, we also should know what the impact of the third dimension is. And that's so complicated because there are so many different types of impact. So you can have positive impact, this is what you're aiming at, but you might also have negative impact. You can have, of course, the intended impact, but sometimes, just by accident, you also have unintended impact. You have impact immediately or long term. You have impact with the beneficiaries directory or with the society. So this is something you have always to take into account. And so it's important to see that impact investing is not just about the management or the measurement, but more a holistic strategic approach. And here I have listed a few characteristics what means impact investing. Yes, of course, that's a no-brainer, as I've said, financial return alongside with the social return. But there are a few other things which are important. So first of all, it's a holistic approach. So holistic means that you are including it into your entire management cycle. It secondly means impact is essential, please measure it. Thirdly, it's based on values. And this is a tricky thing, because values always come with a normative mindset, with an idea how society could, should look like. So that's why we always say, whenever you start with impact investing, the first thing you should do is thinking about how do you envision the world? How should the society should look like? What is your idea of an ideal world? And then you can start doing your investments working towards that. So it's always combined with values, and this is also why you usually cannot just delegate your investment decisions towards an anonymous group, because it also should come from your heart, from your values. The fourth point is stakeholder orientation. I've already mentioned beneficiaries, so please try to understand whom you're affecting with your activities, with your interventions. Who is also in the ecosystem? Who are your stakeholders? And these are not just your investors, these are your partners, these are the beneficiaries, this is the society as a whole. And then the last point is, please think from a systems perspective. You might have a portfolio of different investments. And yes, your specific portfolio company might only target one intervention, one group. But as I've shown also with the interlinking of SDGs and ESG, 
try to zoom out, try to understand so what are really the gaps, what are really the interventions, what are the levers, how can you have scaled impact. So this is what also should be engraved in impact investing, always aiming at a systems level, changing the system to a better. So these are the characteristics you should try to use when you are talking about impact investing. This is a very simple management cycle. I'm jumping over that, but again, impact investing is not just about measuring it. Yes, you should analyze what you are achieving, but it's also about really planning it and learning it. You can say it very nicely to prove and to improve. So these are the two goals when you are analyzing your impact. This is a framework, and I'm not walking you through now all the details, but this is a framework which is quite important. When you set up your theory of change, you should use the IRR instrument. This is coming from development aid, and the key idea is that you start with the problem you want to solve, then you define the needs of the beneficiaries, then you develop your vision, your goals, and then you have inputs, your sources, networks, etc. And many people do stop there. When they're reporting about the impact, they stop with saying, I've invested X million, I've done 10 trainings. This is not impact. This is just basically your input and your output. The impact is, have you changed the life of people? Have you changed the world to a better? This is what impact means. And so please do not stop by just counting the people you have affected to really say what you have changed. So this is an important framework taken from development aid. And this is my last, and this is the most heavy slide, um, my last slide regarding instruments. The key message here is impact investing is really becoming mainstream. Impact investing is using now instruments which are not tailor-made anymore, but we have an industry, an industry which is using standards, which is using databases, which is using KPIs, we have all agreed on. So please do not do your tailor-made thing, but really refer to what is going on in the international world in the impact investing ecosystem. And these are a few frameworks. I would like just to mention the impact management project. More than 1,000 organizations have agreed on this framework, so when we do impact investing, please use that one. It helps you a lot. And if we do all that, yes, impact investing might become, will become mainstream. Nevertheless, we should be very carefully watching who is claiming to be an impact business or an impact investor, because sometimes we might also see fraud, sometimes we might see people who are just claiming to do impact. I'm welcoming everybody who wants to try, but please be honest. Um, so this is uh, why we have to be careful. Nevertheless, I do see a huge chance that we, we are really entering into the impact ecosystem, that we're entering to the impact age, and I'm very much looking forward to doing that with all of you together. Welcome to impact. Thank you very much, Andreas. Your applause, and you're part of the impact age right now.